How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is the second live stream of the day and the second live stream post episode 11. How is everybody doing tonight? I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. We are just waiting a few more minutes. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of last minute tidying up, making sure everything's looking good on my end before we get going. But before we get going, if you're out there in the chat, go ahead and give yourself a shout out. Let me know that you're out there because unfortunately YouTube does not give me any kind of roll call or anything along those lines. So I have no idea if you're out there if you do not give yourself a shout. So go ahead and say hi. Say uh, say something. <laughs> oh man, it has been a good, good day. Like I said, it's the second live stream today. We are looking to finish out the day strong. We're just waiting here a couple more minutes until we... Uh, to give people an opportunity to come on in and get settled in before we get going for the for the stream here. So let me just make sure that uh, everything's looking good on my end. Stream health is good. Yes, everything is looking golden on my end. So today we've got a uh, little bit of what we were doing earlier. We did a bunch of tidying up around the farm here. We ended up getting a whole bunch of grass that we put in directly into our uh, chemistry lab here, our chemistry kit. And right now we have almost a million liters of grass that's being converted into silage. And we have a contract, a couple of contracts that we've already accepted, two sugar beets and a hay contract. And the hay is going to the bales market. So we're going to be working on that here on this stream tonight. Uh, maybe even working on a couple other things. Who knows? We'll see how things kind of play out as the night progresses. Let's see. And likely what I'm going to have to do... Hmm. Trying to see... If maybe I can store these. These almost look too wide to be able to store under there. Hmm. I'll have to think about it. Maybe I'll start storing them. I'll tuck them back here. and I don't know. I'm kind of thinking out loud at the moment. I've got that uh, big old harvester there. I've got a... Hmm. 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 Like I said, just thinking out loud at the moment. Let's see. I think... I think my horse is all good at the moment. Chickens are starting to eh, they're starting to run low. I'm gonna have to address that soon because they're chugging through a pretty decent amount of feed, but they're producing a lot of eggs. We got almost a th well, we got a thousand chickens right now. Got 230 sheep at the moment. Uh, they're going really good. We're gonna have to, uh, I mean, not top them off because they're not going through a ton of feed, but we're gonna have to, you know, make sure they're taken care of. Uh, cows are really looking good. They're about half full right now with 340,000 liters. They're chugging along. And, of course, our one horse. And that food is going to last them a good long time, so we're not going to have to worry about that too terribly much. Let's see. 1033. We'll wait one more minute see if anybody else hops in here with us. Like I said, if you're out there in the chat, go ahead and give yourself a shout-out. Let me know that you're there, because... I have no idea if you're out there unless you say something into the chat. Alrighty. Well, let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling because it is time. So, we were working on a couple of grass contracts and I think they were silage. Um, and I think we even did, um, what else did we do? Did a couple grass, we did uh, the grass around here and we had worked on, was it a, was it harvesting? No, you know what, we had to, uh, we had to run out so it was just the grass contracts, that's right. And that's what we're gonna work on now. Field number 68 over by the uh, original starting farm, not our starting farm, but the map's starting farm. 
That's the one that needs to be worked on right now. Let's go ahead and take this equipment over. Actually, before I do that, almost forgot I need to move some eggs because that's starting to run out of space. And I don't want to miss out on some eggs. It's, it, this thing is just chugging along. We're getting all sorts of product. Just chuck this little uh, wool in here as well for the time being. Oops. We'll get these two. And you can see we've got what? Four pallets of eggs at 1,400 liters. So we've got well over 5,000 liters so far and another 1,400 right here. So over six, that, whoa. Just supermaning across the map here with the eggs. Perfect. Now let's take off. So again, we're heading over to field, what was it, 68. They're just north of the main farm. Uh, not too difficult to get to. There we go. Make our way up the hill and boogie out there. So let's see. I think if I remember right, I can turn left coming up here and... Oops, 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 oops. Bouncing tractors, hard to steer. There we go. I should be able to turn. Yes, okay, I do remember. There we go. And this will connect me to the main drag right over here. And then I can take this to the... Oh my goodness, ah! Don't do that. Okay. For anybody who's seen the first episode of the day, or the first live stream of the day, I should say, uh, we're familiar with just how dangerous this setup is. Holy smokes. The physics when bouncing into some kind of object with this front mower on this wow i mean i've i literally turned this tractor on its head because it just lost control just completely lost control and just bloop, turned turtle i was i was blown away i've never seen that happen before but it happened with this one but that's okay so like i said we're gonna go ahead and dart through the little farm over here and this is the main starting farm of the whole map this is what you start out with if you come in for uh, a new farmer road it's a really nice farm like this is a really nice starting farm it's a little tight um, but lots of storage lots of oh ooh, ooh, stop it the only thing about this setup is that this tractor is just not built for this setup. It's a little bit too light, so it doesn't want to steer as well as it probably should. It's, it's pretty back heavy. Okay, so now... Nope, let's raise that up. Fold, lower... go and now let's mow this and anybody familiar with the channel and how I've been operating on these contractors I'm gonna mow all the grass and then once it's all mowed, I'm going to deliver all the hay from my production point out to where it needs to be taken to. 
um, which I believe was the was it the Bales uh, Market? I think it was Bales Market. I'm gonna take all of it from the main production there at the farm, and then just take the grass here, bale it, and then transport the bales to my farm. And that way, it's just kind of lessens the amount of trips. I don't have to make hay with this uh, right on the spot. I can just cut the grass, bale it, pick it up, go. That's it. And it works out really nice. Like th this is one of my favorite kind of techniques to kind of speed things up because you cut out so many steps. So normally the steps to grass or hay making, we'll, we'll stick with hay because that's what this contract is. The grass to hay making is cut, ted, uh, cut, ted, bale, pick up, transport, and take out, uh, take to a cell point. After my technique, how I do it, is all I do is cut the grass, bale it, transport, deliver it. That's it. It cuts out like two or three you know, steps, and anytime you can cut out steps, it just saves time and saves money. Ultimately, that's what it saves the most of is money. Because you're not having to spend so much time trying to deal with all the extras, you're only having to do the absolute minimums. And what's really nice is that my baler, because it uses silage additive, I get a little bonus because of the grass here. So it's it all works out in the end very, very nicely. I get a little bonus and I end up getting way more product from the fields than I'm having to spend from my production. So it, it really does work out very nicely. I'm very happy with it and how it's kind of turning out at the moment. Let's get this little tuft here. And then turn here and get this little bit. I don't know why, but my head just thought of Rick and Morty. Little bits. Anybody gets that reference? We're, we're going to be just fine. go and then after this I should be able to turn on the uh, worker and then after the workers on I can start kind of delivering the product and kind of going from there, there we go How does this feel kind of laid out? Let me take a look. Almost like I could potentially go in this direction. Um, maybe? Oh yeah, I'll make it all the way. Perfect. Alright, so now... Fire up this tractor. Drop down this bag winch here. And then we're going to go get our secret weapon. Tucked around the back side here. Ta da! Alright, now we can load this up with a bunch of hay and then go and deliver that hay to the to the uh, uh, bale market. Once we have it there at the bale market, we'll bring it back here and oops, come on. There we go. Uh, let's see. And this facility is absolutely full from hay. Absolutely full. I cannot get another drop into it. But because we're using up some of the hay, let's go ahead and turn it on and make some more. So you 
can see, it's going down quite considerably. But that's okay. Like I said, it's going to get replaced. It's going to get re redone. Once we kind of get this all added in, we'll deliver it, should be good to go. So yeah, we're just uh, basically robbing Peter to pay Paul. This is essentially what it boils down to, is we're stealing from here the hay that we have in exchange for just keeping it as grass but the reason that we're keeping it as grass is if we take a look here it's this recipe specifically this is making silage but because it's making silage as a one-to-one -one ratio and giving us 30 liters of methane per cycle it adds up to be a very nice byproduct 80,000 liters is just sitting in this facility alone but then you take a look at our other facility here in the biogas plant we've got 108,000 liters so almost 200,000 liters between the two facilities there, that's a pretty penny of, of just in methane by itself. We might work on getting some of that delivered so we can kind of pad our, our money and get that up there as best as we can. But one of those that, uh, who knows? Might do it, might not, have, might, not blah, 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 might not be able to do it. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So this should be more than enough. I shouldn't have to fill this up fully. There we go. And I'm pretty sure if I remember right, this is Bale Market. Yep. Which is just down the road. And it looks like the rain's starting to clear up. Hay is not accepted here. No. You lies. Sit on the throne of lies. The bale market is just right over here. Tucked around the front side of this building here. And... Now we just need to kind of pay attention until we start seeing money go up. 27%? Okay. Fifty-seven percent. Wow, this is uh taken a lot. I'm actually surprised at how much this has taken. Eighty two percent. Alright, we're almost there. We're almost there. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So that took almost what, eighty thousand liters, I think? I think we're up to 140. Not quite sure. I, I honestly, I didn't even uh, bother to retain that. I should have. Uh, I should have figured that out. But we did calculate out earlier just how ridiculous the amount of grass that we get in comparison to what is required to make a delivery. So, for an example, we found out that we only needed to send. 60,000 liters of silage to be able to pay off the contract, to be able to mark it as fully delivered. Once we paid that off, 
we actually got over 108,000 liters off of the field. So we actually netted over 40,000 liters of excess grass to put into the facility here to run as either uh, silage, hay, or whatever. Okay, we got that. Now, let's boogie over to the field there. Oh, it finally stopped raining. Finally stopped raining. So, I thought I had looked at the, uh, the forecast earlier in the day to see what time it was supposed to stop raining. And it's, I swore it said like 2 in the afternoon, maybe 3 in the afternoon. No, I think it was closer to like 1, now that I'm kind of thinking about it. It was, it was many hours ago, I can't remember. But I think it was like 1, maybe 2, and here we are. It's almost 1500, so that's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, yeah, it just seemed to have taken much longer than what I remembered it saying it needed. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It's not the end of the world, but it is what it is. So we are just going to deliver the baler over to the field. I tell you what, I love this combination. This baler and, and bale stacker makes life so much easier. Go. Come on, little Valtra, you can do it. Ugh, the struggle is real. It is just, it's trying so hard. Oh, now we're losing speed again. I think it can, I think it can, I think it can. Come on, Veltra. Oh, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Oh, and there's the contract. So it was able to cut enough grass to complete the contract. So it should be over there and still chugging along. There should be at least another path or two that it's going to be uh, finishing up on. There we go. Now we're heading down the driveway here. We should be kind of getting to be good. So again, we're going to cut through the main starting farm. Oh, wage payment. Oh, top of the hour. Okay, okay. there and then we're in the final stretch here we go look at that perfect all right let's drop that down turn nope unfold yeah you can see the worker still chugging all around in that corner over there so that's awesome. And now let's drop this. Down just like that. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And let's open that up. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And this is why I love this baler, is that it's got the wings on it, so it can windrow in one pass. It's wide enough to where, with the equipment I have, it's going to get two of these rows at a time, as opposed to... Oh, and with that stacker... ka -chow, just like that. And looky there, we are all done with the mowing. Unfold that, fold that. 
So let's get this into the other field. We'll just set this right over here, just beyond the entrance. So that's why it's out of the way. I'm not, whoa, 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 brakes, 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 brakes. Buzz, there we go. Okay, now we'll kind of pull this off to the side right about there. Why did I borrow all this equipment? Sorry, just don't on me. I didn't need to borrow any of that. Because I've got the, the equipment back at the farm. I've actually got a much better set of equipment back on the farm. Huh, I don't know why I did that. I borrowed it for both contracts. Oh, well. Kind of stinks because I'm going to pay to, you know, lease that equipment. But, eh. And drop that off. Like so. And there we go. We're just going to pick up all these loose windrows and turn them into bales just chug along again this Valtra is not built for this particular baler I should have for this setup I should have not the Valtra that's on the other side with the mower deck on it I should have the one above that I think it's the Q series um, that one has up to 300 and some odd horsepower, and I think this one only has, like, the low twos. I think that one over there has the upper twos, maybe around 250, 260. This, uh, I think is my best guess. There we go. There we go. Nice. That worked out very nicely. Now we get to just chug back and forth. It's working out nicely. I'm happy. I am very, very happy. One more bale and we'll have a full stacker again. There we go. Spit that out. We're struggling again. Come on, little Valtra. You can do it. Let's see. Just have to keep keep on keeping on. Just gotta do what I can do. Like I said earlier, um, if you are out there in the chat, go ahead and you know, say hi, say something. Unfortunately, I have no idea who's out there, who's not. YouTube does not give me any sort of roll call or any kind of uh, thing like that. So I have no idea who's out there until you type a message. So feel free if you want to chat, go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that. Look at that. We're just picking this up lickety split, aren't we? Very nice. I'm pretty happy with this. This is, uh, yeah, like I said, this is this is probably one of my favorite setups right here. Um, the fast baler, don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore the fast baler because of you know uh, how ridiculous you know quote unquote it is, and it is a very ridiculous machine. It, it's you know the unreal capacities of the fast baler is probably unrivaled on the game. Especially now that they have the uh, super capacities and stuff like that. Like, that's just bonkers. Absolutely mad. But, I'm on board with it. I love it. Um, 
I didn't end up using it on this particular Let's Play series specifically because I've used it in the past. Um, and I, w I would normally sometimes use it in the background when I was kind of building things up and needing to do things like quick, fast, in a hurry. But it's one of those that right now we're just kind of uh, chugging along. We're, we're going at a pretty good pace, especially because of the biogas plant, because of the farm productions uh, over at the main farm. So we don't have to really hustle and make everything happen right this second. We can just kind of take our time and just do what we have to do kind of thing which is nice it's not a position I'm used to being in normally I'm used to very much struggling to get things and uh, whatnot and so far I'm not gonna say it's been easy but it's certainly been easier than other maps and it's because I just kind of fell into the biogas plant I fell into the uh, farm productions like I didn't realize that those were kind of the main kind of components of those particular facilities was the methane and, and all that stuff and once I discovered that methane was a actual output and a byproduct for the processes I just dove in head first kind of thing it, it worked out very nicely in the end let's grab this little chunk here There's that little, little itty bitty bit right there. Can we just get that little itty bitty chunk? Sloth chunk. There we go. Perfect. Open that up. And now close that. Fold that. Close up and gone. He gone. Perfect. Let's get this equipment back to the farm so I can hook back up to the bale trailer. Grab all the bales. Ooh, 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 ooh. No. Let's drop that down. Aw. Oh well. I tried getting that little itty bitty bit there at the corner of the field and just was just outside of my reach that's a, that's fine it's not a huge deal like I said this yard can be really tight you've got some really tight spaces in here We're going to take this back to the farm so we can pick up the bale trailer. Once we have the bale trailer, we'll take all the bales. I think we'll be able to make one trip with it as well. If we can make one trip and just kind of head back here and head back to the farm, we'll be absolutely golden at that point. Turn in here. And then we'll just follow this on back to the farm. Work out very nicely. There we go. Perfect. So we'll get back there. And we'll just... Keep on keeping on. Like I said, I'm going to use... I don't know why I leased those equipment. I'm, I I don't know. It just must have been a mental lapse or something. Something happened. Let's see. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Pay attention to the driving and not to... Ooh, okay. Breathe, breathe. E easy, easy, easy. 
Easy there, big boy. Let's not crash right at the finish line here. All right, we'll leave that there for now. And let's go hook up to the trailer. Like so. And let's see. Let's pop that back out. Minimize that. Perfect. Okay. So from here... We've got our trailer. I tell you, I was saying this earlier today. I'm going to say it again here tonight. I love this trailer, and I wish that more of the autoload trailers use this mechanism as part of their uh, as part of their loading script. So you can see in the top left-hand corner, at the very bottom of the help menu, it says Select Work Mode Easy or Pro. Those are your two options there. Easy is exactly how it sounds it's easy it expands the pickup trigger of the trailer to allow you to be able to pick up at a much wider range and then pro shrinks that trigger all the way down to where it's actually directly over over top of the trailer itself and what's nice about that what i really like about that is it really adapts to the style of gameplay that the individual has if you just want to you know, drive by the bales and pick them up, easy peasy, no problem. Well, you set it in easy mode and then you're good. You just drive past and it's going to pick it up. I'm going to do that here in just a few minutes. But if you want to be able to kind of, kind of sort of simulate that you're uh, picking up bales and loading them on, but you're not having to take the time to be so meticulous that you, you know, pick it up, you put it down, you keep everything straight. If it's not quite straight enough, then you load it in a little bit different and, shimmy around do all that kind of rigmarole if you don't want to go through all that or i'm sorry if you do want to go through all that then you switch it to pro mode and then what you do is you just take the bales you set it up on top of the trailer and then it auto snaps into place just like the auto load trailer would but you have to pick up the bales and put it right on top of the deck rather than just have that really wide trigger and it's really nice because it gives you that kind of option for different styles of gameplay um but you're also not having to use it like the auto stack trailers. Um, it, it's basically a, a nice little in-between kind of trailer where you can have, you know, the auto stack, which is the ones that'll you know show the animation of be, being picked up off the ground and loaded onto the trailer, or you have the pro mode, which is kind of the in-between where it's still the auto load feature, but it's auto load with a couple more steps and then there's easy which is just pure auto load and you're good to go you're not having to do any extra steps you're not having to do much else other than just do what i'm doing now and just drive past the bales there we go Ooh, am i gonna have to make two trips oh i am Wow, okay, okay. Feels a lot bigger than I thought it was. Well, I thought it was originally, because I was thinking I was going to be able to get this all in one go. Nope. Not even close. So now let's boogie back up to... Ooh, 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 ooh. Nope, come on, keep pulling, keep pulling. No! Ay, ay, ay. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, well. You win some, you lose some. I eventually won, but that's okay. There we go. Now, now we're cooking with gas. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's go ahead and shimmy on back to the farm drop this off so you figure this is 24 bales at 6500 liters per bale um and we have some bales left back there at the field so let me do some quick math so it's 24 
times 6,500. That is 156,000 liters right there. So if you remember correctly, I think it was like 80,000, 60, 80,000, I can't remember, um, that we, of hay that we delivered. I mean, we doubled it, almost doubled it right here on this trailer load. And we have products still at the field. Yeah, th this is, in my opinion, this is the process to do. This is the process right here. Now, even though we would have all this be hay or straw or whatever, um, and we'd get that overage that we'd deliver and, and kind of go from that point, this is so much nicer because we can just bale the grass. We don't have to make it into hay. We don't have to make it into silage. We can skip steps along those lines. And then we get a byproduct of methane because we're making silage that also has a byproduct of methane. It works out nice. It works out so good. So good. And I'm just, I'm very tickled pink. I'm very, very happy with that because it's going to make us a lot of money. And it has made us tons and tons and tons of money up until this point. I mean, methane, we've been making money hands over fist with uh, with methane. And I'm just, I'm on board with it. I'm happy with it. Let's see. Oops. Let's go ahead and take care of this. Let me go. All right, something like that should be good. And now let's go tuck this uh, little voucher away and we'll be good to go from there. Let's see, so, oh, we need to hook up to that. Don't leave that behind, do we? There we go. Now, now what's cool is this is going to give us over a million liters of grass. Booyah! Oop. Booyah! almost 1.1 million liters and we're just chugging away we are just making stuff happen and oh i love it love it love it love it love it so now we're going to head up to the field again we're going to pick up the remaining stacks so we said it was what 156,000 liters in that first trailer load Let's see how many more bales we have. I think we had at least eight more bales. I think maybe nine total, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I think it was like 70,000, 80,000 liters that it required of hay to deliver up to this cell point up here. And we've already doubled it in the one trailer load. Like, or at least really darn close to doubling. Let's see. So we're gonna dipsy doodle around. There we go. And then once we get all this kind of taken care of, we'll start working on those sugar beet contracts. And like I said, I'm going to use the uh, equipment that I have there at the farm to take care of all that. The 
need to make sure that I'm drinking enough. I keep getting into these long talks and, and I want to say rants, but sometimes. Um, and occasionally when that happens, I'm just talking and talking and talking so much that all of a sudden it dawns on me, hey, my, ho my throat is getting a little dry and voice is getting a little hoarse and I need to, you know, take a step back and it's like, hey, you know, take a drink, you know, give your, give your voice a, a second, you know, to kind of get that little shot of refreshment. Let's see, let's get this back over. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, operating position, perfect. Okay, so it does look like there were two full stacks and a partial, or wait, was there only one full stack? Where's that? I thought I had two stacks somewhere. No, I guess not. So five full bales. Hundred eighty-eight thousand five hundred liters of, of grass that we just picked off this field by itself. I like I said, even worst case estimate, we had about eighty thousand liters of hay that we delivered. We got over a hundred thousand liters in excess product. Hundred thousand liters in one contract. Do grass contracts. Do them. You make out like a bandit on these contracts. And even if you take the product and just sell it along, like if you make, you know, silage bales and sell them, or you make hay bales and sell them, I mean, that's extra money that you're getting, and you don't have to touch them whatsoever if you don't want to. Or you can use them around the farm. You know, I could be using these bales to feed my cows or to feed my sheep kind of thing. You know, an extra 56,000 liters of food isn't going to, you know, go unnoticed. Which, depending on what kind of animals you have, it might be worth, you know, just make it into hay or make it into, you know, whatever. And to use it for animal feed if you don't have enough. Because it's one of those that the product that you're going to get out of those animals is most likely going to be far more expensive or far more lucrative to you than the grass, hay, silage, whatever. You know, like our cows there, you know, yeah, they require, you know, several components because we got the automatic feeder. They need uh, straw, hay, silage, and mineral feed, but we get out things like slurry, manure, and most importantly, milk. And right now I think we have over 30,000 liters of milk. I don't think I've ever had that much. I've never had a Let's Play where I've had the this many animals going at once kind of thing. It is only on this map. And this map is absolutely crazy. Maypole Farm and Cavalier Roy did amazing job on this map. You know, we've got the ridiculous number of animals that we can have in each one of our animal pens. Uh, I think we can have up to 800 or so cows in this field, maybe 1,000. We can have up to 2,000 sheep, 1,000, 5,000 maybe chickens, and a normal amount of horses. Horses are horses. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. And, yeah, 1.1 million liters. And we're just continuing to make hay, silage, methane, Love it, love it, love it, love it. We've also got things like silage additive. We're just, we're doing it. We are simply doing it. I think I need Shia LaBeouf to come flashing over the screen. Just do it! <laughs> there we go. 
And now we're going to park this back in its spot. Unfortunate part about this farm is that it's significantly smaller than a lot of the other farms. But it's a lot nicer laid out because it's a little bit wider. So it's smaller, yes, but the width of the you know, driving areas is actually really nice. Uh, let me go ahead and put this away. Oops. Try that one more time. And actually, let me wash this because it's dirty. That is dirty. Dirty baler. There we go. And we can hit our tractor too. Why not? Why not? We're here. Woo! That's a messy baler. Then the stacker, we'll hit that really quick. And there we go. Perfect. Now that everything's all nice and squeaky clean. Let's go ahead and bring this back around. We'll decouple from the stacker. Like so. Oh, uh, there, that. Bale is loaded. Unload bale. Huh, okay. And now let's back this into place, like so. So, perfect. Now, I just need to check something in the settings just really quickly here, because... Huh. Okay, that seems... Okay. Okay. Minimize that. Sorry, I was just checking something on my end really quickly here because just need to make sure that everything was hunky dory because some reason something flashed up on my screen. I just wasn't sure what was going on. Uh, I need to go get my other tractor again. That's right there. Oof. On the way back, we're going to stop and fill up this tractor. So, like I had mentioned, because of the springy uh, front deck mower there, anytime I hit something with it, it just wants to you know, send me like a catapult across the globe. Um, I had to reset this tractor earlier, and it zapped like a good chunk of my gasoline, or my diesel from this tractor here so it was a really huge bummer you know getting penalized like that and there was one time where it was actually the worker the AI worker that had that happen to them um, where they just got hung up on something and I had to reset them for that too so it was a couple of resets like back to back kind of thing and it just ended up eating up a whole chunk of uh, chunk of diesel so it was kind of a bummer, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, it is what it is. You know, stuff happens. So I was saying a couple of streams ago, it could be worse. It could always be worse. So we're just going to take this back. We're going to wash everything, fill up the tractor, and then sugar beets. Sugar beets. 
Sugar Beats by Dre. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's going to be one of those kind of streams. Big Daddy Day is going to get to be big and goofy. By the end of it, you call me Big Goofy Dave. That's all right, though. So let's go ahead and we'll drive past the first entrance we normally go into so we can hit the gas. Then we'll wash all this stuff off because it's dirty. Just so dirty. And then be good to go. Good to go. G to G. Okay, so here's the gas. Let's do oh, oh, there we go. Top that off. Or there we go. Top it off. Okay, yeah, so we still have tons of diesel. So much. And just like that. Now let's wash all this off. nastiness off of here. So I'm looking over the chat window and y'all are kind of quiet tonight. Hope everything's going okay with everybody so far. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Like I said, go ahead and uh, say hi in the chat. Let me know that you're out there because YouTube does not give me a roll call. Gives me a couple of numbers that I can kind of bounce off of and know that people are watching, but uh, I, I don't get to see uh, names of those people. So go ahead and give yourself a shout out. Let me know that you're out there and we can kind of uh, go from there. There we go. It's clean again. Nice. All right, let's stack this away really fast, and then sugar beets. All right, let's go. Whoops, oops, oops. Right. Nope, wrong one. That one. Boop. And then littering and littering and. There we go. Now we need to hook up to the trailers. And once we have the trailers, then we will probably just leave it here for just now. We won't uh, take them with us because we'll get the big old honking piece of equipment out there first. There we go. Now let's get this out there because this thing is going to be an absolute beast. Let's see, sugar beets should be this one. And then... Drop that there. KJ Wiggums, how's it going, bud? Hope you're having a fantastic night so far. There we go. You know what? Let's go ahead and spray this off just real quick. Just the header. I know we're going to go and put it to work and make it. Yeah, let me go, let me go, let me go. Go. I know we're going to make it dirty again, but. Every time you clean your equipment, it slows down the, uh, not the usage, but the kind of breaking down, uh, the need to repair. So, works out very nicely. Let's see, oops, put that away, hop back in. 
All right, so the first contract that we are going to work on is over past the sawmill there in the south, number 17. That's where we're going to start. And the other one is up there at 73, and that's a little ways away. Both of them are being delivered here to the farm productions. So that second contract is going to be quite a trek. We're going to have to... Uh, go a little ways for that one but it's okay we'll we'll figure it out from there let's see so we're gonna have to be very careful in how we're gonna handle this and how we're gonna drive uh oops 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 i don't want to go this way i want to go oh come on now there we go that'll work Oh, yeah, let me pull out this side, and, uh, KJ says we got five inches of snow, so we went camping, can't complain, <laughs> oh, man, that sounds awesome, that reminds me of when, uh, when I used to go to deer camp way back when, and, ooh, 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 ooh. and, uh, my father, uh, used to have a old, military grade uh camping tent like an old like actual military tent not military grade but actual military tent and it had like the f actual uh wood burning uh fireplace and the whole nine yards we you we'd set it up every year tear it down it you know the whole nine yards and it was huge it would sleep like i don't know like 40 50 some odd people um you know, but there was at most at that point in time, I don't know. Uh, let me think. It was, mm, at the most we'd have was typically around eight-ish or so people that were there. So we would set up, you know, a big table in there, like a dining table. It was just basically old, uh, uh, like folding table kind of thing but uh it just it worked out really nice and yeah go, going camping in the snow oh loved it loved it and like i said that was all part of deer camp as well so going out and you know doing the hunting and stuff that was uh good good times good memories Let's see. Uh, just threw up a tarp. Okay, okay. Living on the wild side, I can dig that. Oops, nope, let's do that. Let's open that up. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Cooking with gas. But yeah, that's awesome. Freaking, uh, I I love going out outdoors and just you know, being. I mean, personally, just being out in the middle of nowhere, uh, I absolutely adore it. Um, you know, put put me out in the middle of nowhere any day compared to like put me in like the middle of a city and mm, nope, nope. I'm absolutely hopeless in the city. I want nothing to do with it. Get me out in the country where it's just me and, and my wits. I'm a happy, happy guy. One of these I keep telling. One of these days I keep telling my wife, it's like you know we're gonna go out and and go camping and whatnot, and she keeps thinking like it's gonna be that uh, uh, glamping. I think is what they call it, like the hoity-toity camping. It's like nah, nah. That, that's that's not how we roll. She's like, well, what do you mean? What are we going to do? It's like, well, likely we're going to sleep on the ground. It's like, well, you mean we're going to have an air mattress? And like, no. <laughs> no, we'll probably sleep in sleeping bags on the ground. It's like, no. It's like, yeah. And, and I don't actually mean that. Like, it's one of those that, you know, she wanted to have, you know, certain amenities. You know, obviously I'd be fine with it. It's not, a, not an issue. It's just funny just to see her face kind of light up. And she's like, no. 
You're not really talking. You're not serious, are you? Eh, maybe. Anything's possible. I remember I said that to, to my sister-in-law, you know, saying how I'd much rather go out into the middle of nowhere, out in the woods, and than going out into a city, any city. Like, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of cities. And <laughs> she looked at me like I was just absolutely off my rocker. It was, it was just the funniest look that you could just give one person to another. And she's sitting there, she's like, why do you, why would you find that entertaining? It's like, why do you find the city entertaining? <laughs> like, yeah, you can go and do things in the city, but, eh. I'd rather go where it's quiet and not have to deal with the, the noise and the, and the, and most cities I've ever been to, they smell weird. They have this weird kind of funk that's about, you know, I don't know. Like here recently, uh, went to Nashville and Nashville was all right. Um, it wasn't a bad town or whatnot. It was just, like I said, I'm just not a huge fan of cities. So, whenever I go there, I'm not. I'm just not impressed. But, I mean, li at least this one was all right. At least there was good music playing all the time. That was kind of cool. Just, we're chugging along here. We're getting a good amount of uh, sugar beets in just these two little passes. And there we go. 60,000 liters. Let's pop that open. Turn that off. And now, this is where we need this bad boy. Let's do this. So KJ, did you uh, did your whole family just throw up the tarp and just go outside and have some fun, or was it like a whole family affair, or was it just the uh, just like a certain set of them? So I know uh, we want to really try with our daughters to you know make sure that they have you know the good wits about them to want to go outdoors and. You know, play, have fun, and and all that stuff. But I know it's so hard with, uh, like, with technology and stuff nowadays to get kids interested in something that isn't, you know, slapped in front of their face and, you know, flashing a bunch of colors and whatnot. Let's see. So let's get this over there. We'll unload. Let's see. Oh, I see that you wrote something. I'll take a look at it as soon as I stop. Like I said, I have such a bad habit of reading and driving at the same time, and it always ends up poorly for me. Let's see. So... Eh, we'll go around this side. It's fine. So hopefully our new trailers here work out excellently for us. I have no reason to suspect that they won't. They're the TARDIS trailers that um, are based off of the base game trailers. They just have additional capacities and whatnot. Um, let's see. Let's load that there. Load that one up. Perfect. 30,000 liters. And now this one. Perfect. Let's drop that. All right. Let's see what you wrote there. Uh, let's see. Jody! Hey, how's it going? There's my knucklehead buddy. Heck yeah. How's it going, bud? Hope you had a good evening after the original stream earlier today. Uh, KJ says, 
Fall to spring is when we camp. Oh, nice. Love it. Uh, traps and ground sleeping or hammocks. Uh, I use reindeer pelts and or sleeping bags. I do a bit of it all. Oh, man, that's awesome. Love it. Uh, Jody, love small country towns. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yo, I would, I would much rather go to some small country town than any big city any day of the week. Any day, hands down. Um, I don't know what it is about, like, I don't see the appeal personally of, of cities. Like I said, it's just one of those that whenever I go to a city, any city, I, I'm like, okay, that's cool. You can, we can do things. We can go shopping. Oftentimes it's way overpriced. Um, just, I don't know, just not really... Like, the only thing that I really actually enjoy about cities, and this, this is pretty universal, is the food. Cities have some really, really good kind of exotic food that you see kind of pop up all over the place to where... Now, don't get me wrong, you know, you got those nice little country towns that have the really nice mom-and-pop type shops, you know, the good, you know rib sticking kind of meals oh yes oh love it love me some good old mom and pop type shops where you can just uh, go and get some you know some nice greasy ribs and slathered and barbecue or you can get the uh the country gravy oh if you can't tell i'm a little bit hungry <laughs> but uh but no it just like I said, that's about the only benefit I can see with, with big town, uh, big cities. KJ says, uh, it was just my oldest son and I this go. My girls are the only two that don't really enjoy the cold camping. Yeah, I mean, maybe one day. Maybe one day they'll get into it. You know, keep our fingers crossed for you there, bud. Uh, KJ says, Jody, hello. Hope you are well. Uh, Jody says, my uncle owns a real farm in real life. Ooh, nice. It's been a lot better day here lately for me. Awesome, Jody. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Yeah, my uh, my grandparents actually owned, well, they still own. It's It was an operational farm for a very, very long time. But my grandfather, um, just he got too old. He couldn't keep up with it. Now, he does sublet a lot of the land. Uh, for other farmers to come out and do their own farming. So basically they pay him to allow them to plant crops and do all that stuff, which is a really cool kind of deal that, he, that he's got going on there. Um, so that, that works out really nice for him. He gets them a little bit extra income and whatnot. Um, you know, and he doesn't have to do anything. They just, they're just kind of there. They do their thing. They bring all their equipment. They plant everything every season. They rip it out every every season. Mainly it's corn. It's a lot of corn that they tend to plant. But, uh, yeah, it, it's really cool because you, you go back there and, you know, every summer you see the, the stalks, you know, up in full, you know, full growth and whatnot. And every fall you see the big open plucked through fields kind of thing. Ooh, that's not going to work out. Let's see. Let's go ahead and drop that down. Gonna give me a little bit of extra space here on this end because the trees are just right up on me. Let's see. Uh, Jody says, I'm playing on Bally Springs map tonight. Ooh, nice. Love that map. Absolutely love that map. So, Earlier today in the uh, morning live stream, or actually, yeah, morning was morning, actually. Uh, I ended up talking about kind of wish list items for FS25, because we're starting to get to the part where we're going to start seeing the wind down for FS22 and the spin up for FS25. You know, or at least that's what we all hope, you know, if, uh, if everything kind of works out the way that we anticipate it to. And I was kind of thinking of some wish list items. You know, what would be some really cool things to see in FS25? 
And then it dawned on me, one of the biggest things I would love to see is kind of base game, Giants tackled it and you know, brought it to, to the game itself, would be the Bally Springs animals. And what I mean specifically are the males and females and the babies versus mid-age to adults. Whoa there. That I would absolutely love to see. I think that'd be one of the coolest things that Giants could tackle for FS25 is to make it to where the animals are actually growth dependent, like what we see on Valley Springs. So you, you can get them as babies, they grow into you know mid-range, like pigs is a perfect example. They grow into mid-range or mid-aged animals, and then they grow into adults kind of thing. And then they reproduce, and then you get more babies, and so on and so forth. How awesome would that be for every single map not just valley springs not just uh bucks county pennsylvania or any of the other maps have undertaken the uh the kind of updated model from valley springs how awesome would that be to be able to have that as just a basic in-game function of the game i think that would be just the cat's pajamas right there just absolutely money in the bank that would be one thing I would love to see. What about you, KJ and Jody? What kind of things would you love to see uh, coming up for FS25? You know, other things I'd love to see would be kind of the base game integration of um, all the crops and stuff that we have access to right now. So all the... Uh, premium expansion stuff that we received, all the uh, Gavile uh, things where we can take cut sugar beets and um, what is it? Cut sugar beets and cut uh, TMR and bale it. You know, things like that. Just all the DLC just kind of rolled into the base game kind of stuff. I'd love to see that. And I'd also love to see. Um, there we go. 13% with just that one trailer? Okay, okay. Uh, what else uh, was I saying earlier? I had it, now I lost it. Hmm. I'll think about it. I'll think of it. Uh, Jody says owns a real dairy farm. Ooh, nice. That was something else that my grandfather did too. Was uh, you know he had cows, he had pigs, uh, and whatnot. He didn't have pigs for long. Um, I remember him specifically saying that he hated doing pigs, but he did it like several years in a row um, because he got paid really, really well for it. Um, so he said it was worth the hassle. Um, just because of what he got paid for it. but he said he absolutely hated doing it because of the of the stench that was always around the because where the pigsty was was not that far away from the main house so anytime the wind kind of blew in the right direction poo boy was it ripe it was really ripe and even when the wind wasn't uh, you know necessarily blowing in the right direction it was just one of those pigs are a really foul smelling creature creature you know kind of makes sense but uh yeah it just it just was pretty ripe i i remember going over there for a few uh few summers to help out especially towards the latter half of summer we'd go up there and go bailing uh you know he would you know work on the fields on the back 40 and you know, make a whole bunch of hay bales, and then it was our job to come over. The whole family would come over for, you know, the day, and we would take the bales from the bale trailer, load them into the little bale elevator, and then once they were in the bale elevator, we would all be either at the top or at the bottom of the elevator, and we'd be stacking them in the hay barn. Um, and it would take all day long it was an all-day affair and that was with um you know let me think oh that was with all four of his kids plus uh any of the older uh grandkids who could help out at the time which you know at the time wasn't that many it was basically myself and, and my cousin 
Uh, and even then, we were still relatively young, so we kind of wore out relatively quickly on it. Um, ooh, 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 stop, stop, desist. Ah, 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 no, oh my goodness. I can't stop, I can't stop. Break free, run away, run away! Okay, there we go. Now let's go ahead and just... Pluck this back over here. Just like so. Perfect. And now we'll let them kind of go with the longest part of the field as opposed to the kind of shorter end here. All right, let's go back for trip number two. Jody says, uh, yes, we need more in-game, especially the baby animals. Yes, absolutely. That'd be fantastic. You know, I would love to see. That was the other thing, and Kevlar Roy kind of mentioned it earlier uh, in the stream. Um, I would love to be able to see, if at all possible, 4X maps for uh, newest gen consoles. I think that would be really awesome, and I think the consoles can handle them. I don't think it's an issue whether or not they can't handle the, the horsepower necessary, the, the new ones, the PS5 and the Xbox uh, S and X. I think they have the horsepower necessary. I think it was just a issue with, uh, with the manufacturers of the consoles themselves. I am not 100% certain. I remember reading about something way back when, um, actually longer than before I did YouTube or started doing YouTube. So it was quite some time ago. It was over a year ago. Um, and like I said, I, I thought I remember seeing that, that what it boiled down to, that reason 4X uh, maps were not coming to consoles is because of Xbox and PlayStation kind of throwing a hissy fit over it. Um, I just don't recall what it was. I just, something about that the, uh, like possible performance issues or, or things like that. I don't know. I, I'm not a hundred percent certain. Like there was no guarantee that maps wouldn't necessarily perform up to par if too much was added kind of thing. So because they couldn't guarantee what the modders were going to do. They just basically left as limited to two X. I think that's what I read. I could be wrong about that though. Again, that was that was uh, probably about two, two, maybe even two and a half years ago when I read that. So it's just one of those kind of slips my mind. Let's see, um, b -b 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 Jody says, I'd love to see the real good American map on base game starting out. Yes, absolutely. That would be really cool. Um, here's the thing is one thing that drives me absolutely bonkers when it comes to Giants maps. It doesn't matter where it's based off of where it's located. That, that don't, doesn't matter to me. I would like to, I agree with you. I'd like to see a nice American map, but my issue with giants and the maps that they create and then they do it with every single one of their maps and it drives me nuts drives me absolutely nuts is that you cannot purchase large chunks of the map and for areas that you can purchase you can't demolish or destroy um, some buildings that are already on those areas so you're really committed. So a perfect example is Elm Creek. Perfect example. There's tons of area on Elm Creek you can't purchase. Tons of it. And then the areas that you can purchase that would be nice to kind of build up, 
there's one place in particular I can think of. It's towards the western portion of the map, just south of the highway. Um, I think it's just outside of the main town in the southwest corner there. There's an area where there's a bunch of sheds and stuff that are just built right there. And you can purchase the land, but you can't destroy the sheds. So there's nothing you can do about kind of making that portion of the map your own. And there's not enough land to really kind of build it up and do anything else with it or build around it because of all the sheds that are there. So it's just a real, it's just a real pain. Really, it's, it's a sad, sad thing kind of thing. So I think that a lot of the maps are actually really good looking. Oh dear, oh dear. Stop it, stop it. A lot of their maps were really good looking, but the problem is, is that because you can't really do much about making them your own, it just makes them very limited and hard to... hard to keep them sustainable for long-term gameplay. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on, Tractor, you can do it. You can do it. Ooh, the struggle is real. The struggle is real. There we go. All right. Well, now we can just kind of plot back and forth. So, yeah, that's something that I'd really love to see. Is a uh, good American map and Giants starting to have more area for purchase that's capable of being built up you know whether it's it's got things on the area already that you can demolish and then do something on your own or being able to just have an empty lot and being able to build it up from there because that's the other thing is lot giants really doesn't do like quote unquote placeable areas too well Oof. Do the shuffle. Do, 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 do the shuffle. Do, 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 do. <laughs> what? Why? Why is that a thing? There it goes. And you know what? What I might do now that I'm kind of thinking, oh wait, I can't do that, can I? I don't have the right header. No, never mind. I was going to say I was going to change the settings to be more unrealistic because then we can just kind of fly through these contracts. But then it dawned on me. It's like, no, I can't do that because I don't have the right header. I've got the slower header that will that'll limit me even if I had the higher horsepower one that will go faster. So I'm not going to bother with that. I'll just I'll plot along at 12 miles an hour. It's fine. It's fine. Let's go ahead and grab this, though. We'll go ahead and just chuck this out. Go ahead and take care of it. There we go. Come on, trailers. Let's do this. But yeah, like I said, what are some other features that you all would love to see? I mean, like I said, I think that there's tons of opportunity for, uh, for Giants to really take this game to the next level i really think that they have the capabilities of doing that i think there was a lot of growing pains between 2019 and 2022 and what i mean by that is giants took part in a lot of uh a lot of things that they didn't partake in in years past so they outsource a lot of things uh, in FS19 that they didn't outsource in FS22 and it you know it, it freed them up to do a lot of things in FS19 that they either didn't have the capacity or didn't have like a lot of things were broken when we first got this game when it first came out there was tons of things that were wrong with it um, and it took Giants a while to, to kind of get their gear spun up and, and to fix it kind of thing but now that those things are kind of worked out, hopefully, uh, you know, all that's kind of taken care of. Now they can start focusing really heavy on, you know, what kind of awesome things they can bring to the next iteration of the game. 
and you know kind of build off of the good bones that they finally have established in F for, in FS22 into FS25. I think that that would be kind of a, a, a at least I hope would be a good way to look at it and kind of uh, kind of go from there kind of thing. That's that's my hope at least, like I said. Um Jody says to be able to use all the maps. Uh, what do you mean, Jody? Um, are you talking like uh, all maps across like what we would see on PC only kind of thing? Like PC, Mac only versus uh, console? If that's what you're saying, then it kind of ties into what I was saying earlier about the uh, uh, being able to use like 4X maps and stuff. Um because if that was the case, if we were able to use 4X... Oh, actually, no, no, I take that back. Uh, just because we'd have access to 4X maps, that doesn't necessarily mean we'd be able to get all the maps because there's a lot of maps that have uh, uh, things kind of built into them that makes them PC only. Uh, one of those mods was the multi... I think it was called multi-terrain angle, if I'm not mistaken. I remember people were... Uh, really upset here recently that a map released on console that was just for PC Mac only but it was able to be released on console because they removed that multi-terrain angle which all it all the multi-terrain angle does is you know if you want to hire a worker you have you know very specific angles at which you can hire the worker at so in FS19 I think it was what like uh, Zero, uh, zero, forty-five, ninety. Um, wait, what was that? It was zero, no, zero, ninety, um, one eighty, and two seventy were like the main four, and then I think they also kind of bifurcated all those individual ones, and then this one kind of added uh, like the in between of those in betweens. But multi-train angle gives you, like, tons of different angles in between all of those different angles uh, as that you get from base game kind of thing. So it gives you, like, infinitely more angles that you can kind of let your worker kind of run off and go into any given direction that you want them to go into, rather than um, just having the restricted angles that we have right now. But I remember there were there were many people messaging me when that map converted over to um, to consoles because they removed the multi-terrain angle. There we go. So we're getting there. We are getting there. Working out just fine. Wow, it's midnight already. Holy smokes. Ah, ah, ah no, stop, 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 stop. Let's not, let's not get crazy here. go now we're chugging along hmm you know what something just dawned on me and I don't know why it took me this long to think of it I'm kind of feeling silly for just thinking of it now we're gonna do something different we don't need to use the trailers here, going 55,000 liters at a time. We can, we can do this the smart way. I feel like Homer Simpson right now. I am so smart. I am so smart. SMRT. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, back when the Simpsons were good. Back in my day. There we go. I'm honestly, I'm really ashamed that it took me this long to, for it to just kind of sink in. You know, why am I using these trailers to do this when I could just use the Global Goods palette? It's all going to go in here anyways. Like, ugh, I don't know why this took me so long to think of that. Okay, let's bring this here. Stop, drop, and roll. There we go. Let's go ahead and park this. And then we'll get the little the itty bitty Valtra. Little green. See? Work smarter, not harder. See, again, my brain works in mysterious ways because now all of a sudden the movie uh, A League of Their Own just kind of popped up into my brain. And uh, specifically the scene where uh, Tom Hanks is chewing out one of the, one of the ball players and uh, he's like, Use your head, Alice! It's that lump three feet above your... Yep. <laughs> Let's see. Jody now says, uh, I'd love to see all kinds of vehicles on base game. Yes, that'd be awesome. And how to use the whole entire map. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I would I would absolutely love those those as like base game features. Um, like I said, it's one of those where I understand some maps where, like, the area is so built up, like housing and stuff like that, where there's, there's, like, a strip of, you know, homes and all that, and that area not being able to be utilized and purchased or whatnot. I understand that. But there's large chunks of, like, Giants maps in particular where there's no real good explanation as to why it doesn't have the ability to utilize the land it's just not able to be utilized kind of thing and then there's other chunks where it doesn't make sense that it can be utilized but you can purchase them kind of thing like I was saying earlier so it's just one of those kind of sometimes it make it doesn't make sense sometimes it does make sense and there's really no good rhyme or reason as to why they do the things that they do sometimes but like I said I'd much rather them you know do it and than not I'd much rather them just doing what they can do kind of thing let's see so we're gonna now we're bringing out the big guns what I need to do is turn this around because I need the auto load facing outwards. Ka ching! There we go. Now we're talking. Ah, no, run away. Leave me alone. No, hey, that. Ooh, ee. 
Team 10 or Laura Bing Bang, leave me alone. Ha! Ah, run away! Ha ha ha! I'm free! Oh, where are you going? Oh, I, I think I angered it. Okay, now I think it's starting to starting to figure it out. There it goes. All right, perfect. So you figure even at two hundred thousand liters. It's still going to fill that up in, what, uh, that's 60, 12, 6, 12, 18, so what, 3 and a partial? But what's really cool is because we're putting this into our farm productions, we'll just dump everything in there, and I think... Yeah, we can make some cut sugar beets. I don't think there's any other recipes with sugar beets in them. Oh, mineral feed. But we're not going to do that. Cut sugar beets. Oh, we could make pig food. I mean, really... If we wanted to make a good amount of money, pig food is the way to go. You can make some massive amounts of cash with pig food if you have a way to sell it that's the that's the key factor is you need to have a way to be able to sell the pig food which means i mean all that means is you gotta you know install a, a sale point that's it it's it's ridiculously easy install a sell everything sell point and you're good to go kind of thing but you can make some massive amounts of cash on pig food massive Excuse me one second. Ooh, sorry, I had to had to cough there. That's one of these one of those things I'm gonna have to invest in sometime here soon is a cough button. Uh, something that I can just quickly, you know, push and it doesn't send any feedback through the line, because I don't know if y'all can hear it, but every time I hit the mute button on my on my microphone, you can hear for a split second that little thump that uh, that hits right before it actually cuts the microphone out and if I had an independent kind of mute button that I could just kind of push off to the side kind of thing that might be kind of a better layout than, than that and then you're not going to hear that kind of thumping feedback every time I have to mute the mic do a cough or something a little cough button just punk, and be good to go Well, what I'm surprised about is the header on this machine is filthy, absolutely filthy. But the machine itself is not that uh, not that bad. Uh, Jody said it's a real good movie. Uh, you talking about uh, A League of Their Own? Um, yeah, that's that's honestly League of Their Own. That's one of my one of my faves. That's definitely up there. Um, yeah, Tom Hanks did an amazing job in that movie. Just, really, just everybody did. Um, such a good one. Such a good one. Um, trying to think. Oh! Um, I watched a really good movie here recently. Um, and it was one of those... It was a good movie, but it was an incredibly awful subject matter. 
Um, it's a movie called Sound of Freedom. And it's basically about uh, child trafficking kind of stuff. And in particular, it's based on a true story from a person who was a part of... Um, I forget what agency he was a part of. But he ended up tracking down one particular child in particular because he got kind of I don't want to say emotionally invested but I mean it's impossible for you not to but it was just it was a very hard movie to watch but it was a really good movie um, extremely drama filled extremely and like I said it's one of those kind of subject matters that's just it's absolutely awful and disgusting and terrible that that thing actually exists in the world um but yeah like i said it, it's it's one of those that definitely worth a watch it's an extremely powerful movie the acting was you know absolutely top notch in my opinion um yeah that you know i'll, I'll admit it there was a, a few times in there where i was you know choking back some tears kind of stuff it was it was tough it was, it was real tough there we go okay let's see Look at that. That's so much nicer. We get to empty out the entire contents of the harvester. We don't have to sit there and keep fighting with it and go, you know, trailer load by trailer load. We can just do one quick kind of, you know, empty out. We get almost four full empties before we actually have to do a run. Oh, so nice. So nice. Now I wish that uh, I wish that the Global Goods palette, the one that I've got there, was a little bit more stable. And what do I mean by that? So I found in my experience that if you're using more than one of these Global Goods palettes on a map and you strap them down to a trailer and you have, you know, let's say two of them and you have 400,000 liters worth of product, you, ha you cannot take it to the same sell point at the same exact time. Every single time I've tried it, it has freezed the game and crashed. Every single time. You have to take each one of these individually, one pallet at a time, put it over the sell point, then it sells off and it's fine. But it's just putting multiple over the same sell point at the same time. I've never had good experience with doing that. It's always you know ended poorly for me. I'm trying to think of, uh, there was a couple other movies I watched here recently that were actually really, really decent. Like, they weren't half bad. Um, oh, uh, a little late to the game on this one, but the Sonic movies were actually not that bad. I was actually kind of impressed, actually. Um, they seemed really kind of, uh, I don't want to say true to form like true to, to whatever storyline there is in Sonic but it just it didn't seem like they just used it to kind of use it as a vehicle for whatever messaging they want to throw out there it, it actually was out it seemed like it was out there for actual entertainment value and uh, I think it showed I thought it was actually really good um, what else? Like I said, I was really late to the game on those ones. Um, I've actually watched a couple of here recently. Um, oh, that's a that's a movie I want to watch here soon. I haven't watched it yet. Um, oh no, sorry. Let me go back here real quick. 
another movie I watched here recently that I really liked, um, The Pope's Exorcist with uh, Russell Crowe. That was actually a really good movie. Uh, really enjoyed that one. Um, it wasn't as scary as I was hoping for. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of creepy crawly kind of thing. Um, because I, I personally, I absolutely love those mo kind of movies. Like the Conjuring movies, I really love the, that whole series. Uh, really love those. Just those kind of bump in the night kind of scare, you know, kind of movies. Absolutely love them. But, uh... Like I said, I wish that that was a little bit more scary and it kind of devolved into a kind of, uh, uh, almost like a, um, what's that one movie with Tom Hanks where he's, um, Da Vinci Code, kind of that, kind of that, you know, insider church you know hide hiding you know truths and all that stuff it, like it kind of devolved into that a little bit but it was still good it was still a good movie there we go and then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get the next field started perfect See, so the next field, 73, I think, I think I can get up there. Let's see, let's spin around like so, fold that, fold this. Uh, what is my wife's favorite movie? My wife's favorite movie, she loves, um, oh goodness, what is it called? Oh my goodness, why can't I think of it? It's with the, um, oh, did I miss my turn? I think I did. Oh, did I not? Okay, no, I think I can get out there this way. Um, it's with the, the woman who is in the pirate, the original Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, it's like an old English movie. I can't, why can't I remember the name? Uh, Jennifer, hola, how are you doing tonight? I hope you're having a fantastic night so far. I'm, why am I blanking on it? Um, it's not Kate Blanchett. What's, what's the woman's name from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie? Um, she, she was like the, the lead lady in it, and it's like an old English movie, um, oh my goodness, that's gonna drive me nuts. Hello, Jennifer. How are you doing tonight? Let's see. How do I get out there? I'm going to have to check that. Um, ba -dum 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 -dum. I think... I think I can take that road that's next to the biogas plant. Yeah, I think I can take that get up there that way like going out in that direction there oh my goodness now that's really gonna drive me nuts all right you know what we're gonna take two seconds we're gonna figure this out because that's that's just gonna sit there and linger in my brain um, IMDB to the rescue uh, do, 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 pirates of the Caribbean. So the actress name, Kira Knightley. She's she's the main actress in it. Pride and Prejudice. That's the movie. 
Yes, that that's it. Pride and Prejudice. That was that was her, or not was her. That that's that's her go-to kind of rom-com uh, movie. Yeah, that one. That one she has uh, going every. I don't know. Maybe every six months or so, she'll you know go into the go into the room or something she'll slap it on the tv and just kind of zone out into it she she really likes that one not one that i've actually uh personally have checked out um it's not uh don't think that's really my kind of cup of tea oh there's the entrance right there hmm well, really no other way of doing this other than doing it. Something like that here. Boop. There we go. Unfold, unfold. Go. Oops, oops, oops. I'm missing beets. Beets. Sugar beets. But yeah, she actually, for the longest time, she did not like uh, scary movies whatsoever. And it was only, I'd say, within the past five-ish years where she actually started to really grow into them and really start to enjoy them um and a lot of that's because you know she would want to watch she would she would sit there and be like you know what would you like to watch and it's like oh you know there's this movie i'd like to watch but i know that you're not that big into it um and she's like, well, you know, one day she just pipes up and like, you know what, let's watch this this movie. And I forget which movie it was where she, like, really kind of stunned me as to, you know, her saying let's watch it kind of thing. It really kind of blew me away. Um, but then we watched it, and it was one of those where, you know, she slept really close to me that night. She was right on top of me, but one of those that uh, I didn't mind. <laughs> I certainly didn't mind. It worked out really nicely too because you know she she would uh, sit there and watch the movie. She'd get all cuddled up, nice and close, and you know sit there and we just kind of hang out and enjoy the enjoy the flick. It's, it was nice and. go just gonna make a bit more of a border and we'll be good to go I think yeah maybe one more full pass will do. go then once this fills up I'll jet back to the other tractor I will unload it over at the farm and then I'll bring it over here and we'll see how far it gets me did I just mess up a bunch? no I guess my eyes are I think it was the shadows from the trees there just kind of played tricks on me Trying to think of some other really good movies here. 
that I've seen. I guess I don't tend to watch a lot of new movies because they just they don't seem like they're meant to entertain anymore. They they seem more, you know, message driven than anything. And they just tend to do more to annoy me than to entertain. There we go. Let's pop that out. Turn that off. Head back to this here. Let's see. All right. Jet back to the field. We'll then take this over. To, I'm sorry. Take Jet back to the farm. Take this back out to the new field and then empty it out. And we'll just keep on keeping on. Hopefully, I won't have to make more than one trip on the next one now that I've got 200,000 liters worth of storage capacity. But we shall see. Let's see what this gets us here. This should get us a good chunk into the next contract as well. It should not only complete the first contract I was working on and delivering to, this should, you know, have a bunch of overage. So that'll be nice. Let's see. Oops, 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 and turn. Ah, bounce. There we go. Yeah, my my big thing is is I I grew up in the in the eighties and nineties, so a lot of my favorite movies were, you know, in and around that time or before, you know, because I'm you know, not afraid of, you know, looking back and, you know, finding movies from yesteryear to enjoy or just entertainment in general from yesteryear and be able to, you know, really appreciate them. You know, what's a funny story here, um, here recently, I was talking to my wife and telling her, you know, there's a movie that I'd absolutely love her to see because I don't think she's seen it. Um, and, and what kind of started this is we were driving around, and as we're driving around, we pass by a Taco Bell. And for some reason, all of a sudden, the movie Demolition Man just came into my head, and I just started giggling like a small child. And she's like, what is so funny and she's looking at me like I'm crazy and I'm like have you ever seen the movie Demolition Man and she's like no and I'm sitting there explaining oh it's a good movie you know just a, a, a you know 80s 90s action kind of comedy kind of kind of movie but for those who haven't seen it you know and I'm not worried about spoiler alerts because you know it, like I said back in the 80s or 90s you know what, let me get an exact date, because I still have INDB up on my phone. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Demolition... 93. Made in 93. So if you haven't seen it in the, what, 20 plus years it's been out? 20 years exactly? Yes? No, 30. Wow. Wow, 30 years old. Holy... Anyways... Um, it's a movie with Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Stallone is this uh, well it takes place in like late 80s Los Angeles where everything is like really run down like almost post apocalyptic uh, Los Angeles where law and order is you know disintegrating and you know crime is just at an all time high kind of thing and Sylvester Stallone plays a cop who is in charge of getting Wesley Snipes who's like this huge organized crime boss kingpin kind of kind of guy um, and Sylvester Stallone gets set up for a crime that he didn't actually commit uh, by Wesley Snipes well he ends up catching Wesley Snipes and they both get sent to a maximum security 
cryogenically frozen prison where each of them are frozen in time and then um, you know, only let out to kind of do their parole boards kind of thing. So they're de-thawed and all that stuff. Well, the whole premise behind the movie is that once they are unthawed, like Wesley Snipes is unthawed first, and he's able to escape this maximum security prison because in the future everybody is very like crime has been completely gotten rid of and everybody's like you know, facial tissue soft kind of thing there there there's like the cops are not actual cops or at least you know cops in the sense of where they actually have to deal with criminals cuz there hasn't been murder in you know decades and there hasn't been um you know real sense of crime and in, in you know, many, many, many years kind of thing. Well, Wesley Snipes, who is a actual hardened criminal, escapes, and the people of the future have no idea how to deal with him. And they bring back Sylvester Stallone, who was the person who originally captured him, and to them, he he's basically like this Neanderthal. Kind of thing like they don't know how to handle him kind of thing that he's more of a novelty than anything and they are just you know completely inept in every way well one of the scenes in the movie the reason why taco bell kind of hit home uh, and and just kind of made me giggle like a little child is that one of the scenes is that sylvester stallone saves uh some high and mighty hoity-toity person and he's like, oh, well, you know, let me thank you. I'm so appreciative and all this stuff. I'm going to take you to Taco Bell. And everybody around Sylvester Stallone's all giddy and happy. They're like, oh, you know, they're freaking out. And Sylvester Stallone kind of looks at them and they're like, Taco Bell? Really? Kind of, kind of look. He's like really confused. And... He, he takes the side. It's also has Sandra Bullock in it and uh, Rob Schneider. And he takes Sandra Bullock aside. He's like, why are you so excited about Taco Bell? And, he's, and she's sitting there explaining. It's like, oh, well, there was the great restaurant wars. And now they're all Taco Bell. And they get to Taco Bell. And it's like this extremely fancy, like, like lavish place. And it's just really funny. So yeah, all that to to get to that kind of punchline there. But if you haven't seen it and you can appreciate kind of that '90s uh, action comedy kind of thing, give it a give it a try because it is it is funny. It is really good. Like I said, it's just a, it's a, just a cheesy little action movie, but it, it's just it's classic. I mean, it's just one of those that uh, you can just sit back, relax, turn off your brain, and just enjoy. I think I can set the worker off now. There we go. Let's see, let's take a look at something real quick. Nope, uh, that's what I wanted. Okay, so we're going to make a decent amount of money on these two contracts. About 20... Let's see, 26000 plus uh, or minus the leasing costs, so not too bad. Hopefully we don't get uh, absolutely demolished on the leasing costs. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Let's see, so about 15000 and... I mean, it's not a giant field, but it's going to take a little bit of time. But we'll get there. But it was shortly thereafter, after explaining that movie to her, got me thinking of like, oh, what are some really good old 
uh, action movies that uh, that I used to enjoy, and got me thinking of things like Demolition Man, Last Action Hero. Um, let me think. What are some other really good ones? Oh, uh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, that was a good one. I love that one. Um, what else? I mean, basically anything with Arnold Schwarzenegger or um, Sylvester Stallone back in the 80s and 90s were just absolute classics to me. Personally, I used to love them growing up. Um, you know, and then, you know, my taste kind of, you know, evolved into like Jackie Chan's and Jet Li's, the kind of fighter, you know, action movies. Um, what else? And then later on, there was like Jason Statham and, Bru oh, I mean, Bruce Willis was also in there. I should throw that in there as well. Um... Trying to think of some other really good movies. Hmm. I mean, of course, there's the classics like Rambo and whatnot, but Rambo 1, 2, and 3, I would kind of avoid the latter ones when Sylvester Stallone's the you know, you know, what, 50s or 60s and trying to rehash his youth kind of thing. Yeah, no, not, not so much. Not so much. But, uh, no, the other ones are, are really, really good and really like those ones. Um, it was funny. Over Christmas, uh, over Christmas, my wife and I, we were looking for movies to watch and... It was one of those that we had started watching like Christmas movies very early on in the in the in the month kind of thing. Towards the beginning of December, we started watching some Christmas movies, and I was kind of getting Christmas movied out, kind of thing. So I'm like, well, you know what? If if because she's like, well, why don't we watch a Christmas movie? I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, how about uh, Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger and and Sinbad? And I had forgotten just how enjoyable that movie was like it's just again a stupid comedy movie but it's actually rather entertaining it's pretty pretty funny at times again stupid movie but entertaining and then it got me thinking of some of the oh that's a total recall that's another really good one Arnold Schwarzenegger did a lot of good sci-fi movies way back when um, Total Recall was a really good one because it's actually a very deep movie um, because there's so many layers to it. Is, is he dreaming? Is he not dreaming? Is he... Uh, did he die in the chair? Did, I mean, there's, there's so many kind of subtext and subplots in that movie um, that you can kind of explore kind of thing because... Uh, at the very beginning of the movie, what some people kind of speculate in the movie is that Arnold Schwarzenegger is, uh, because he mentions it right before um, being uh, being made unconscious and put into that kind of dream state for the implant implantation of the memories kind of thing. And he mentions how basically the people who are doing that procedure basically lobotomized um, somebody kind of thing. And they're like, oh, no, 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 that, that doesn't happen. It's just a freak accident, not, nothing to be concerned about, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, some people speculate that he wasn't actually dreaming, but that he was just completely lobotomized and is now trapped in that world of... Um, in in the dream that they implanted in him that it, there's no returning kind of thing which is just kind of a cool little subte subtext or possibility uh, possible outcome kind of thing um, but yeah no it's just like I said lots and lots of good 
Uh, you know, aside from why, 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 why? How dare you? That was rude. There we go. Let's see now. Again, I I still got IMDb on my phone, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look. Some classics. So. Oh, of course, the Terminator series with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Those were classics. God, how did I forget those? Let's see. Um, yeah, so there was Terminator. Oh, Commando. That was a good one. Predator, that was a great one. Love Predator. Um, oh, The Running Man, that's right. The Running Man, Twins, with Danny DeVito, that one's funny. Kindergarten Cop, that's a great one. Um, yeah, Last Action Hero, True Lies, Junior, Eraser, End of Days, The Sixth Day, Collateral Damage, Let's see. And that's kind of the end for Arnold there. What about Sylvester? Good old Sylvester. There we go. Well, of course, the Rocky series, That's those are great movies. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So... Do, 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 do. Yeah, so there's the Rocky series... Uh, then there's Rambo, starting with First Blood. Let's see. Oh, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. That was a hilarious movie back way back when. Cliffhanger, another good one. Uh, Judge Dredd, love Judge Dredd. Copland, that was a good movie. That was actually like uh, with uh, Robert De Niro and uh, Ray, I think Ray Liotta was in that too. That was a good one. Um, yeah, and again, that's about that's about it. I mean, yeah, there was just there was a time you know back in the '80s and '90s where they were just they were pumping out tons of those action flicks. But there were a lot of them were actually really, really good. Like entertaining good. Not like actual like good movie, like quality cinema good, not Martin Scorsese good kinda kinda thing. Um, but just really just entertaining. You know, again, you can't really say that too often nowadays with Hollywood and the stuff that's getting pushed out. You know, specifically the entertaining factor. All right, well, we're about halfway through this load. And I'm thinking that after this field is done, I think we're going to probably call the stream a wrap after this because it is getting late it's almost one o'clock in the morning my time and i am starting to get a wee bit tired but you know while i'm thinking of it as well i should give uh my ch uh, tier twos their shout out uh so let me do that real quick so mark k thank you so much for being a tier two channel member i greatly appreciate you 
Uh, and that is all my tier twos at the moment. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, please go ahead and check out the link in the description below and the join and or the join button also down below or on the main channel page. You can get access to things such as uh, custom badges, custom emojis, and uh, early access to things like the edited content like Let's Play series and uh, channel shorts. Those are all available for tier one memberships and you can get those for 99 cents a month. And for tier two members, you can get access to exactly what you just heard. Everything that you heard before this for tier ones and a shout out every single live stream. So those start at $4.99 a month and it all goes to help to support uh, support the channel and help us you know, continue to maintain and grow uh, into the future. But again, I wanna thank everybody so much for being a subscriber, member, whatever the case is, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I actually need to step away for just one second, I will be right back. Okay, I am back. So sorry about that. The wife was getting ready to go to bed, so I wanted to wish her good night. Let's see. So let's go and grab the. Whoops, oops, oops, oops. Grab this again. There we go. Now we're now we're cooking with gas. Wow, 178,000 liters. And this is not a big field. That's how much yield that you can get off of these fields. It's incredible the amount of product you, you get. Now imagine if I was running this back and forth at 50,000 liters a you know a go kind of thing. I need to adjust my headphones here real quick they're not sitting comfortable there we go now we're now we're talking perfect turn that off I'm thinking thinking we're probably gonna have a full bag and then some we're probably gonna have to come back for another load that's gonna be my guess So yeah, like I was saying before I took off, I just want to send out another special thank you to all my subscribers, all my members. It is incredibly humbling and I am eternally grateful for every single one of you out there. Um, it has been one heck of a ride, you know, doing doing YouTube and getting to know people and, and getting to talk to people, you know, on a, on a daily basis. It has just been an absolute blast. been really enjoying it. And it's one of those where I'm, like I said, I want to make sure that I'm very consistent in saying thank yous and, you know, just giving the, the recognition to everybody out there, you know, not, not just to my, my tier twos or my tier, my members or just whatever in general, um, just 
everybody, just everybody in general. I've met so many great people, you know, along the way um, that have just made this whole experience of doing YouTube and being a content creator just that level more special. Um, you know, I've met people like like Jody, like KJ Wiggums, like Dust Bunny, like Crimea River, um, like Hillbilly Farmer, uh, Cavalier Roy. There's uh, Dancer of Clouds I just mentioned in the uh, previous live stream um, and talking about the Mod Map Delusion. There was, or there is um, Silver Eagle. There's, uh, I think I said Cavalier Roy already. Um, I mean, so many, so many people that I've just met along the way that is just made doing this an absolute pleasure, just absolute pleasure. And I have so much fun with coming out, hanging out with everybody and just chatting, having a good time kind of thing on the live streams. I have absolute ball doing the map tours, map updates, let's plays, all that stuff. So again, I just want to thank every single one of you out there for, for coming out, hanging out, or you know, watching the replays, whatever the case may be. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Really, really genuinely do. Let's see. So we have got... Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, never mind. I... Uh... I switched to a different screen really quick and it's showing the replay of uh, the stream here and it went to a point where I was in the um, the tractor and I ran into something and all of a sudden I looked and I thought that it was live like showing what I'm seeing now and that's obviously not the case but I just it really confused me there for a second I was really like like, whoa, what's going on? I ah, like getting ready to hit the panic mode in my voice kind of thing. And then it dawned on me. It's like, oh, no, wait, silly. That's a replay. Or that's the stream, you know, in the past kind of thing. It just took me a second to realize what it was I was looking at. Ooh, we are, we are almost done with this field we are rocking and rolling you know what we're gonna we're gonna intervene into whoops there we go so we're not gonna we're gonna kind of expedite the the worker and let them kind of do their thing yeah so we're definitely gonna have a little bit of an overage and then maybe one more pass Oh yeah, one more. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Let's pop that open. Let's that. Perfect. Let's dump this out. We're not going to be able to fit everything into here, which is fine. It's not, you know, not the end of the world kind of thing. Let's see. Okay, still like, wow, 30,000 liters. So this field held over 230,000 liters of product. That's insane. You know, I'm going to take this tractor. I'm going to grab, or no, I'll grab it on the way back. That's what I'll do is I'll grab it on the way back. I'll grab the header trailer on the way back. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. There we go. 
All right, let's boogie back to the farm. Let's get this all wrapped up. Could you imagine taking 50,000 liters at a time? So this is what? It would be five full trips. Not full, full, but just five trips total. Back and forth, 50,000 liters at a time, all the way back to the main farm, all the way out down in the southwest corner. That would be brutal. Just absolutely brutal to go all the way down there five separate times rather than just two again any chance that you can you know pick up a little bit of extra time by not having to do those extra things is much better in the end much much better okay so we have Oh, 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 oh. Meant to turn there. Okay. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, so we've got... Sorry, I'm just checking out a couple of other things. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Perfect. So we got 200,000... Wow, 200,000 liters from that field. That just that blows my mind that we were able to get that much product off of that small field. You know, imagine if we had one of the, one of the, oh goodness, that snuck up on me. One of the larger fields on this map, like 82 up in the top, uh, the n northeast corner uh, there. Imagine if that was sugar beets and one, how long it would take, but two, how much product you would get off of it. Like it would be incredible the amount of uh, product you get off of that. Yeah, we're on 73, and I would say that's eh, maybe a little bit more than a quarter. less More than a quarter and less than a half of 82. So basically, I would say double and double and then some. So maybe a million liters. Uh, not, sorry, uh, half a million liters would be the, the final get off of 82. Yeah, I mean, quite a bit. And my guess is, is that I will finish the contract with this delivery, and then I'll go back down, grab the uh, rest of it, and have tons of overage. I'm actually really curious at how much I'm going to have as a end result of these two contracts. So let's see what we got here. What is going on out there? Sorry about that. I don't know what was going on outside. It's 1 o'clock in the morning and neighbors are screaming about something. Let's see. So we haven't reached the 
sugar beet capacity yet. Shocked that we haven't. Oh, we're right there. We are right there. Right on the cusp. Okay, now it's starting. There it goes. So we're going to have. Okay, 17,000 from here plus an extra 30 plus thousand from the field that remains. So, I mean. It's not as much as I thought. It's going to be over 40,000 liters for the two contracts. But I don't know. I was expecting expecting more. Huh. Yeah, I was expecting way more than that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see... Uh, Let's see what the final outcome is. Get back to that field and we'll go from there. And like I said, on my way back, I'm going to grab the header trailer, bring that into the field, and then be kind of good to go from there. I might just bring it all back on the tractor here and then not have to deal with hooking up to the back of the uh, big harvester. I can just bring this all back on my own. That might actually work out a lot better now I'm kind of thinking about it. Let me think. Getting up to the biogas plant up here. And we're just just waiting now we're just about there and once we get there we'll be good to go like i said could you imagine this trip five separate times like that would just be incredible like just all the back and forth back and forth and by the time you are getting done with the first trip you're then likely going to be hopping right on the second trip because your harvester is going to be full by the time you get back. So there's not going to be a break. You're just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Might even get to the point where you're actually, like, your harvester is actually sitting there waiting for you kind of thing, waiting for you, and then you're just wasting money because the worker's sitting there taking up money. So the field's there in the distance. Harvester should be popping up. There it is. Okay, like I said, we're going to grab the header, or not the header, the header trailer. Uh, okay, there's the trailer. It's kind of hard to see. There's the connection right there. Perfect. Uh, 
Okay. So go ahead and... Unload. Another 30,000 liters. And then... Pipe in. Oops. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. Now we can boogie. All right, 30,400 liters. Once we get that all situated and the header taken care of, we're gonna wash it off because that is extremely dirty. And might as well. Get the harvester back to the farm and then we will start wrapping things up. I think that'll work out just fine. Sorry about that, had to cough again. Let's see. So this is working out rather nicely. I'm actually, I'm actually happy with how uh, how well this is working out. Yeah, very happy. Able to kind of just quick connect up to everything, take most of everything there, back to the farm, and then all I have to worry about next is the harvester, and then good to go from there and the harvester actually moves at a really good clip because it's the modded one that uh, does all the different products just with a separate header to them um, I think it goes like 37 miles an hour or some ridiculous speed for the size of the vehicle but uh, I know there's there's other models that'll get it up to over a hundred I think um, yeah like super ridiculous speeds but we were kind of aiming for somewhat within the realm of realist realism, so yeah, we didn't we didn't go with that one. And I think I've said this on previous streams, but certainly one of my favorite mods um, is this particular harvester combination, harvester header combination here. Um, there's other combinations out there like the uh, Colossus pack and whatnot, but I much prefer this one because you have one harvester just with different headers. You don't have to buy, you know, separate bits of machines to do different jobs kind of thing. And it's way cheaper than the Colossus pack. Any one of the bits of equipment in there, it's way cheaper than that. So it's a much better set of equipment for a starting point. All right, we have the farm in the in the distance in the background. Pull on in. And now, oops. All right, final tally. Looks like we're going to have almost 50,000 liters. We're going to be really close. 
Dalton, how's it going? Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Or, I mean, really, evening where I'm at. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Oh, that's why I almost drove off. 47,000 liters of sugar beets left over from those two contracts. That's, woo, that's nice. That's very nice. Love it. Let's go ahead and spray off all this equipment because it is dirty, dirty, dirty equipment. Holy smokes. All right, let's start up front and work our way back. Dalton says, you too, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it greatly. Let's see. That should be good. We'll hit the tractor here real quick. The rear weight. Unfortunately, Dalton, I hate to say it, but we are actually just getting ready to wrap up the stream for the evening. It is... Uh, 1 15 uh, in the morning my time and it is uh, it's a wee bit late for me so uh, you're just missing all the action but I do appreciate you stopping in and you know hanging out with us hopefully you can uh, hit us up next time we're we're streaming look at that it's pretty again nice all right first things first like I said, right now we're just kind of doing a little bit of last minute cleanup from the contracts that we just performed. Oh, hey, easy there. Pop that back here. Um, let's leave that there. We'll go get the harvester. Uh, this way. There we go. So let's see. I'll boogie this thing back at 30, 37 miles an hour. Oh, this, this mod is ridiculous. I absolutely love it. Love this mod. Like, like I was saying just a minute ago, this is out of like the Colossus pack and, and whatnot. Like there's a couple of them out there that are the uh, overpowered, oversized, overcapacity uh, mods. This one is my favorite. And a lot of that has to do with this kind of starting price point compared to all the other like Colossus and and uh, the Reaper mods and all that. Um, I like this one because, one, it gives you all the different crop types in one harvester. You just have to purchase different headers. Um, so that's really nice. And it's a cheaper price point, even with the separate headers that you have to push or have to, have to purchase. So it works out so nice to be able to, you know, start out a farm and not have to save up for for years before you can actually finally get a good set of equipment to do the job. I mean, this thing I think is a little over two hundred thousand dollars and ten thousand dollars per header kind of thing as a kind of starting point, but that's not that bad. That's not unachievable. Um, like four and five hundred thousand, it's not unachievable, but. It's going to take you a while to build up the funds to be able to do what you want to do kind of thing. So, like I said, I, I do appreciate this and all the different crop types this can do. You know, aside from sugar beets and potatoes, this thing can do cotton. It can do sugar cane. It can do red beets, parsnips, carrots from the premium expansion. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this thing is... The, the jack of all trades and master of one which is root crops or technically uh, sugar beets or, and I'm sorry technically sugar cane and cotton are not root crops but you understand what I'm saying there we go let's get this all washed off 
and we'll be good to go. There we go. Ooh, that finally got all sorts of dirty. Wow. There we go. Terados T4. Perfect. So I'm going to move this off the trailer. I think back up right there should be fine. Oh dear. You know what? Fine. Not going to work with me then. Do what I got to do. Can I fit these? These won't fit under here, will they? Nope, not even close. And then what about stack them back here like this? Put that one there. Put the one for the red beets in front of it. There we go. Perfect. Something like that. And then maybe I can slink my way through here. Oh, crud, that's the periphery. Oh, this, this might have been a huge mistake. Oh, and now I can't see anything. Ooh, um, well... What should have been a huge mistake may have turned into something actually rather nice. There we go. Perfect. Drop that there. We'll pick up the bale grab. Or the, um, not the bale grab. The uh, big bag handler right up front here. Oh, there it is right there. Almost drove right by it. And I think, like that. Perfect. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. Go ahead and collect on these contracts now. Oh, wow. The leasing cost didn't cost as much as I thought it was going to. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Look at that. $211,000 in the bank. And we've got all this product here on the main farm at the chemistry set right here. Let's go ahead and click into that. Let's get the sugar beets a Dyson and a Slicen. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yep, cut sugar beets are being made. And now... Let's see, we've got almost 90,000 liters of methane here, and then well over 100,000, yeah, 114,000 here at the biogas plant. So it is chugging along, just chugging along. I love it. And the hay is almost maxed out again. It is so close. Uh, where is it? Right there. Yeah, look at that. It is right on the verge of getting maxed out again. Let's see, we should be able to see it kind of top off. 
Come on, hey. Maximum capacity. We're almost there. It's so close. So close. So close, come on. Well, I thought we were closer than what we were. 941,000, we still have almost a million liters of grass that we're gonna convert into. So as of right now, if every single liter of grass converted into silage, we still wouldn't have enough room in either silage or hay like to hold everything in. We, we're now over in capacity in both of those categories if everything gets transferred into silage. Like that's wow, that's just wow. I am really, really thrilled about that. Let's look at that. We got almost a million liters of grass. So it's just chugging along. We have eh, just under half of the available capacity for uh, silage. So not much more room that's going to happen there. Oh, this is still still going, huh? Yeah, still chugging along. Well, I think that is where we're going to call it for a night. Because like I said, it is now 1.30 in the a.m. my time. And I am getting rather tired. But I hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you all so much for stopping by, hanging out, chatting with me tonight. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. I had an absolute ball. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing. It shows you're engaged with this channel, enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day, night, evening, wherever you are in the world. Take care.